Hi, everyone. I'm Alex. I'm here to talk about a project I worked on recently that sort of combines two popular projects. One is the mini Mongo framework that Meteor wrote, which is the in-memory MongoDB API implementation that you saw earlier, and backbone.collection, which is the popular backbone framework's way of grouping models together. And basically what this lets you do is it's just a standard extension that lets you run ad hoc Mongo queries on all your data in a backbone collection. So I really, the motivation for this was to pull one piece of Meteor out that I really like, which is the client-side queryability of a, an in-memory data store with complex Mongo queries and apply that to an already popular front-end framework that a lot of people are using in a really lightweight way. So you just drop my file into your project, extend from my class instead of the vanilla backbone collection, and you just run with your Mongo queries. Couple design decisions, complete backwards compatibility. So if you extend from my thing as opposed to the vanilla collection, nothing will break. You just, you, all your code will keep running in production, and then you can add these ad hoc Mongo queries wherever you want. And you pick up the normal find, fetch, map for each, as well as all the observable stuff. Um, another thing that's kind of interesting that I did is cross API interaction. So say you have a Mongo update that finds everyone named Dave bumps their score by 10. If you have the standard backbone model change event listener on the collection, you'll get callbacks with the models, even though it didn't come from a normal backbone update. And the other side of that is if you did random access to just grab a model and set its score to 10, and you had any observable queries on the mini Mongo side, you would get callbacks with those models as well. And they'll look like you expect, like it's a backbone model, it's change event, will fire, everything like that. Um, really the only difference between this and the, what you're used to with meteor.collection on the client side is that you get backbone models instead of eJSON. And in terms of future plans for it, I want to make a few alternative builds available, like an AMD module for RequireJS or Load Runner, a common JS module so people can just install this and run it in Node. And then other things are more abstract, like I want to explore defining backbone.model as a custom data type for eJSON, which is probably what I would have done from the start looking back on it. Um, and then a lightweight live data integration could be cool so that people could have like an in-memory backbone data store kept in sync with one in the browser just as an NPM module and just very lightweight. So that's it. The code's here if you're interested. That's my username and the project name. And then if you're on the live stream or if you have a question later, that's me on Twitter. Thanks. Questions? Questions from the room? Um, the question the, was how sorry, do you make it yeah. reactive? Yeah, the question is how do I make it reactive? So the tack that I took is just taking all of the reactive stuff from mini Mongo and then just doing updates to the backbone models at the same time. And you kind of just get the backbone callbacks by the nature of doing a model.set and the properties that changed. That fires the event. Sure. So the question is, do you have to add your own rendering functions if you want live updates to the screen? And the answer is yes. Uh, this doesn't do anything as, as far as actually mapping the data onto the screen. It's just a way to, to do all the mini Mongo operations on a backbone collection. So it's just the data store, no reactive UI. One last question. It's strictly client side. So it's just a, a single JavaScript file you drop into your client side app and you get all the mini Mongo stuff. In the future, I may explore a lightweight live data thing. Could be cool. Cool. Thank you. <laughs>